okay there we go hey guys what's up happy wednesday yes today is wednesday i am super excited to be coming live tonight um yes i am live from the bed tonight because it's been a super long day intensive has been super awesome and i wanted to hop on here tonight hey i wanted to hop on here tonight because there's been a few different things happening over the last few days um and it's really made me more so happy wednesday happy wednesday it's really made me more so um i guess how can i describe it um it's really made me so much more grateful for God and all the different things that he's doing in my life. But I'm really going to another level in business and life. And I really started to sit down over the last few days and really start to think about what are some of the things that has like pushed me to my next level? What are some of the things that has really like getting me to the next point? Um, what am I doing to consistently hit four or five figures every single month um and what i had to stop doing in order to hit four or five figures every single month and so here's the thing um i have not had a six figure month yet and i'm gonna say yet i haven't had a six figure month yet i have hit six what's up Shaq? hey carol um i have hit six figures in my business um in a couple businesses but I haven't hit six figures a month yet. I'm definitely almost there. I'm going to put it out there, right? Um, but I really started to reflect on some things. It is definitely coming. Yeah, listen, it's definitely coming. I started to reflect on some things and I really was like, what is really stopping us? Why haven't we really hit that point yet? So I, I'm going to share 10 reasons why you have not hit four or five figures yet in your business, especially using content and social media okay so y'all um listen listen y'all just don't know today so i'll first off share the live out um and i'm here's what i want to tell y'all today i i i receive word that um i receive word that an uh, opportunity that I have been trying to be a part of for so long. Um, I got to send you my new stuff. Okay, awesome. Um, <clears throat> an opportunity that I have been trying to uh, get for so long. Um, I have been denied for it like the last three years. And I've just done different things to try to get this opportunity, this position, whatever it is. And so today, um, they told me I got to like, I've been accepted. Um, and I'm just like super excited. And here's and this is why I knew tonight's conversation was going to be so big, because it just means so much to me at this point. And that's why I wanted to have the conversation tonight um, and really share this with you guys. So I, all I got to say is I've been telling y'all for months and months and months and months and months and months and months. Um, yesterday's price is not today's price. And so. I, I would never encourage anybody to get in the door um, before the price goes up. But I'm just saying this because I literally have, neg I just, look, I've been grinding all month and I've been praying all month. P grind and pray, okay? Grind and pray. And it's it's paying off. So yesterday's price is not today's price, all right? Let's just put that out there, okay? But I really started to reflect yesterday on what have I been doing? What are the like? What are the things that really helped me get to that next level um, in my business in order to hit four or five figures every month? And so I got I got my handy dandy notebook tonight, y'all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share those things with you. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up, y'all? What's up, Coach CC? Um, grind and pray, y'all. Grind and pray. All right. So tonight I am sharing the ten reasons why you haven't hit four or five figures in your business yet using content and social media one thing i will say um coach cc is on here and she's at that point where she's she's gonna hit four or five figures in her business in the next 90 days period okay thank you she's gonna hit four or five figures in the next 90 days with her business all right so number one number one thing um you have not picked a platform okay you need to pick a platform whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, you have to pick a platform. 
picking a platform really gives you the opportunity to set up shop and to really sit and like, you know, build the foundation, really get to know if this is where your ideal clients are, really get to know if this is the thing that you're supposed to be doing. Like, this is a place where I'm supposed to be. Um, really kind of like just set up and, and just start to show out. What's up, Priscilla? Um, and so you really need to pick a platform. That's the number one thing I had to do in order to scale my business to four or five figure months. I had to pick a platform. Okay. So when I was able to pick a platform, I was able to customize, optimize all those things and really start to show up on that platform and become an expert of that platform. Not only did I show up on that platform, I learned the platform so I can become an expert of the platform. Okay. So one, you got to pick a platform. It Instagram might not be your platform. Instagram, you might, your platform might be LinkedIn. I have my, a friend of mine, her platform is LinkedIn. She like, she don't even know she's teaching me a lot of things about LinkedIn. Like you have to pick a platform. Okay. Number one thing I had to do in order to hit four or five figures in my business, I had to pick, pick a platform. Number two, I had to get real clear on my brand identity. I had to get real clear on my brand identity, guys. Let me tell you how important it is to brand first. A lot of times we go to content first before we actually do branding and you have to brand first. Brand is really, what is your mission? Like, why are you doing this in the first place? What is the point in you even wanting to show up on this platform or work with people to do this certain thing? Um, I'll just, because Coach Cece is on here, I'm just going to use her for an example because she went to my first intensive. Um, but she, when she told me the reason why she wanted to start her business, her coaching business, I said, that is it right there. That's your mission. That's your why. That's what you communicate to so many people when they ask you what, like, what is the reason you have to show, you have to identify yourself as a brand. And that can be, that's also your logo. That's also, you know, putting together your, your colors. It's, but it's not just the aesthetics piece either, y'all. Like you really need to, like I said, your mission, why are you doing your vision, where you see yourself going, who you see yourself helping, what, what is the impact that you want to put onto the world? Like I tell people, Coach Rocky and Rock Your Content Academy are two different brands. Coach Rocky is a personal brand. Rock Your Content Academy is my business brand. They're two different brands for me, but they're, it is, is really a brand. Like I have a whole identity. I have a whole identity, but part of me had to really discover who Coach Rocky was first before I can put, before I even put Rock Your Content Academy together. I really had to, I really, messaging is a part of branding. Um, I really had to get clear on my brand. Like, let's be clear because uh, I see you put in here, I thought it was messaging. First off, messaging is a part of your branding. L let's be very clear about that. When you, when you can identify you're like, listen, I can't break down on this on tonight's live a full brand strategy. But if you guys have not had a full brand strategy or work with a coach who can help you really get your brand, all, like identify what your brand is, you definitely should work with a coach who can help you really get your brand together. Branding comes first. Branding is your mission, your vision. It's you being authentic. It's coming up with your brand pillars, your messaging for your business, every single thing. You are a brand first. Like you're putting together your brand. When you walk in, when I walk into a building, people know I'm Coach Rocky. Most of y'all, some of y'all don't even know my first name. Like seriously, because you know why? I wear my brand. I wear it all over. I wear it all over. Yes, brand is not just logos and colors. That's the aesthetics piece of it. But branding is it's everything. It's everything your business stands on. It's it's your foundation, all right? Okay, number 2. That's what I had to do. All right, number 3. I had to what's up dream? I had to really get clear on my target audience and my niche. I had to really get clear on my target audience and my niche. 
I found out that I could not help everybody. By trying to help everybody, I was not helping anybody. I had to really go through and say, who who am I really helping and what am I helping them really to do? Because even even in my messaging, I had people coming from everywhere. Your name is around. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Um, I had people coming to me for all different kinds of things because I do all different kinds of things. I have so much I have so much experience in so many different areas that people really just like literally just it, it, it was overwhelming, but nobody was buying. Nobody was buying. They got that go my that go my government name. OK, nobody was buying because they were like, man, she do everything. So how can she help me? How can I identify with that? There is a difference between your target audience and your niche. Your target audience is the group of people that you serve. Your niche is the, is the, is the solution. It's the pill. It's, the, it's basically how you solve their problem. So I had to really get clear on my target audience and my niche. I could not serve everybody. I had to start picking the side, picking the side. Okay. Now, here's where a lot of us struggle with this. We're multi-passionate, okay? We're multi-passionate where we we can do all the different things and we struggle with trying to figure out what's the thing that I do. You can do all of it after you pick one thing. After you pick one thing, pick the one thing that you are going to be good at, work that baby out, and then once you are known for that thing and that's your expertise, that's your whole whatever, then you can go and start to do other things, dibble dabble and to other things. Because a lot of you guys, some of you guys know because y'all been rocking with me for a while. Shaq for sure has been rocking with me for a while. I, I can do digital products. I'm into Airbnb. I'm into Turo. Um, I ha I'm a, also an Airbnb mentor and coach. Um, what else I got going on? I do business. I can help you with business credit. I can help you with, I can help you write a grant. I can do so many things, but I'm doing the one thing that God told me to do. I'm showing up the way God tells me to do. Like that's, that's just period. Okay. Right. That helped me. I was overwhelmed trying to figure out how to do it. Exactly. When you do one thing, I, you know, what's so funny and I, and I hate to keep picking on you, Cosi, but when we had the conversation, even I had a conversation with those in my inten intensive tonight, we had the conversation of you are so good at so many different things, but you literally can't be that good at every single thing. Like there's you have your zone of genius, your expertise. Yeah, do that thing. And then guess what? You can bring in other people to help amplify your talent. That's how you really bring more value and add more value to your clients. So I really had to pick a side. I had to pick my target audience and then I had to pick my niche. How am I going to help people? Like, how am I going to solve people's problems? Okay, that was number three. All right. Number four. Number four. Um, I had to really put together a strategy. I had to put together a strategy behind content. I had to put together a strategy behind my social media, like how I really wanted to, like my pillars, my goals, my, my tactics, where, how I'm showing up, when I'm showing up. Like I really had to put together a content and a social media strategy because w I was showing up on social media just to show up. I was showing up because it was the thing I thought to do. Like, I thought that that was just part of what I had to do. Remember in the beginning, I said, before you start to do content, you need to get your branding and your messaging. Like, yeah, somebody else put it in the comments. But y'all, brand when you get your brand identified, that's a part of your mess. Like, you're adding in your message for your business. So let's not get that confused. But I started to put out content before I really was clear on my brand and where I was going with my business, right? So the content, I was just putting out content. I could go live. I can go live with people. I was talking to people. I was doing all these different things. But at the end of the day, I was just basically shooting blanks, y'all. 
Seriously, I was just shooting blanks. I didn't have a strategy. My strategy was just to show up whenever I felt like it. It was to give value on various different things. I mean, at one point, you could probably catch me on live and I was talking about having a traumatic experience. What did that have to do with anything about social media and growing and helping people with their Instagram? Hey, helping people with their Instagram or any of that. It didn't have nothing to do with that. I was literally all over the place. I had no strategy, none, but I had to get a strategy. I had to figure out, okay, how am I going to use this IG platform? When am I going to show up? What type of content am I going to put out? Okay. Okay. Shaq, I know you Shaq been with me for a while y'all, but like what type of content do I want to put out? Um, what are my goals? What goals is, am I, why am I even on social media? Like, what are these, like all these things, how am I going to be the content and social media coach? And I don't have any strategy myself. So I really, I really had to put together a content and social media strategy to really tackle Instagram and then to tackle Facebook. Then to now I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Pinterest. Like I really had to put a strategy. The strategy is what really helped take me to the next level of hitting four or five figures in my business, okay? Number five, consistency. Black girl, uh, ghetto girl clap, consistency, okay? I had to get consistent. Not just, listen, let me tell y'all something. It wasn't just being consistent about showing up. It was also about how I dealt with people in my everyday life. Like they, they was like, oh my goodness. Maybe somebody can relate to this. I was more committed and consistent to other people and their problems than I was to my business and actually doing the things that I needed to do to go to the next level. My consistency for other people was way higher. Like my commitment to other people was way higher than it was to myself. But once I was able to slim, like trim the fat out of my personal life, out of my professional life, really start to tell people, look, you got to get behind the paid door. Because here's another thing, y'all. Like if you're not consistent with your messaging on, listen, I will help. I can do this while we on live. But if you want a real strategy, you got to get behind the paid door. If you're not consistent, like showing up, putting out your content, planning your content, um, you know, not just planning your content, but actually creating your content. Like I had to become consistent with myself. I guess a part of that is also boundaries. I had to set boundaries in my personal life and in my professional life because I just, all the lines was blurred. So what ended up happening is because I was over here and over there, right here where the business was, it wasn't growing. It wasn't going anywhere because I was too stretched thin. But I had to be more consistent with me personally and me and my business in order for it to go to the next level. A lot of us lack the consistency because we lack the clarity. But you have to be consistent. You have to, and then I had to create what consistency looked like for me. That's what took me to the next level. I had to create what consistency looked like for me because I couldn't execute based off of somebody else's consistency muscles. I had to create my own consistency muscle And I was able to execute and get stronger because I followed what worked for me. You guys have to do the same thing. A lot of a lot of you guys just aren't consistent enough. You say you want this, you say you want that, but you're just not consistent at doing the things that you're supposed to do in order to get to the next level. Consistency builds like that muscle as you are more consistent, you are building up your execution. Oh, I didn't even realize there was you said anything. Okay, well, I guess I answered it. All right. So that was number five. Number number six, confidence. Confidence. Let me tell you, I say confidence, but really it it's clarity. I had to get really clear on what it is that I was doing, how I was gonna help people. And that clarity helped to build my confidence. 
it helped me to show up as my authentic self because now I knew I knew who I was as a brand. I knew who I was as a person, as a business owner, as a coach, as a mentor. I knew all of those things to the point where now I can show up confidently no matter what. I can get on live and I can have a bonnet on or I can have my hair in this little struggle ponytail, whatever. I can do those things. Because I am confident. I can confidently tell you guys that my boot camp is 997. Hey, love and sense. My my 30 day boot camp is 997. Because I believe in myself and I believe in what I'm doing. And I, I know for a fact that you will get results. When you when you come into my ecosystem, you will get results. Now, I would say maybe a year ago, was I this confident? No, I wasn't. But that lack of confidence meant not being able to demand the price that I knew I deserved, not being able to tell people what my price was and in confidence, not being able to communicate what that price meant. And that's not features. I'm talking about the benefits. When you pay, when you invested in yourself, what benefits you would actually get from paying that money? Confidence. I really had to work on my confidence. I really had to look in the mirror and say, I am worth, first off, I'm worth $9.97. First, I'm gonna just put it out here, y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all what happened. Why re- I'm gonna tell y'all why I even got to this this 10 reasons why you're not at four or five figures. And I came to this list. What's up, Cherish? Today I I applied for a um for a I don't even know. Y'all might as well just call me Professor Rocky at this point. I applied for this position at a community college to basically go in and teach. I'm teaching, you know, the evolution of Instagram, the evolution of market into some dual credit students their dual credit is basically you're in uh, high school and college and these kids who are in the business program they they have trades that they're turning into businesses um i'm working on it they have trades that they're turning into businesses they're learning about social media they're learning about marketing all this different stuff um i met this this young I met this uh, man this this young man I'm gonna call him young man because me and him are like the same age um, I met this young man at a networking event and I got to speak at an event for him and he invited me to come speak to his class his students that turned into um, our <laughs> that turned I I can't even like I it's crazy how I'm even talking about it that turned into an opportunity to speak to his dual credit students twice a month starting next month so september october and november so when i tell you um i a year ago i wouldn't have had the confidence to even apply or even look into something like that i would have dealt i would have been dealing with imposter syndrome who me little old me i don't even know enough about social media i don't even know enough about marketing i don't even know this i don't know that but this me this me was like, yes. How much does it pay? Oh, that's not enough. This is my price. Thank you. So this is why, this is what I'm telling y'all. Confidence. Confidence. It's not arrogance. Let's be clear. It's not arrogance. Because one thing, one thing people can never say about me is I'm arrogant. I'm confident in my ability to help my clients transform. I'm confident in my ability to get in front of others and be able to talk and be able to help you see things and help you grow and help you go to the next level. And here's the thing, y'all. I have been, this has been, I've been doing this for a while. This ain't nothing new. There's things I do behind the scenes that y'all don't even know about. There's things that I've been able to help people do that y'all don't even know about. This is just, I'm i am going to be real with y'all. I'm 32 years old. I'm 32 years old and going to be basically filling in part-time as as, as a sort of a, pro- a professor. What? what come on now and you want and and y'all 
You think I'm I don't feel confident about telling somebody my 30 day boot camp is 997? You want to work with me for 90 days is 2497? You think I'm not going to feel confident in that? But I will tell y'all with accolades come price increases. Just putting it out there. Let's go into number seven. Let's go into number seven. Okay. Okay. Number seven, build your internal foundation before you see the results around you. Absolutely. Number seven, scalable offer. I did not have a scalable offer. Okay. Let me tell you what that means. You guys are probably wanting to know what is scalable offer, right? Basically a scalable offer or scalability period is that you can handle an increase in your business. Um, you're not fixed. You don't have, thank y'all. Y'all think y'all just don't even know how crazy in my mind I'm going out of my mind today. Um, but basically you can handle an increase in your business without it affecting you personally, affecting your time. Like scalability is really everything for a business. And I, what I find, hey, what's up? What I find is that, especially in a lot of service-based businesses, because we give our time in service-based businesses, it's hard for us to scale. So for example, if you were a hairstylist and you wanted to take in more clients every month, right? Um, you probably, I mean, if you wanted to take in more clients, you probably would have to be working 25, eight in order to take in more clients every single day. You probably would have to work 25, eight, but scalability means right. Scalability means you, you would actually hire people, charge them rent and have them have clients that come in that can get their hair done. So you're making money off of the people who's like renting your spaces in your salon, but you're still being able to do hair and you might be, because you're renting out spaces. Now what you can do is probably cut back your hours. OK, cut back your hours doing hair because now you're making more money with the rent that you're making from your the people that are leasing your space in your salon. That's scaling the business. I didn't have a scalable offer. I was doing a lot of one on one coaching. I was tired. Right. I didn't really have a lot of digital products. I was doing all these done for you services, these little things here and there, here and there, this and that. I had so many things that I was doing, like literally so many things that I was doing. I didn't really have a scalable offer. My time was so like limited. I was drowning. So I had to create a scalable offer. I had to really put together what is my what is my funnel look like? What does the process look like? What does that look like for me? So that's eliminating a lot of those done for you services, taking a lot of that stuff out because honestly, it was doing nothing but killing my time. It was bringing in money, but I was tired. It was it, and I was unhappy. Let's just be real. I was unhappy. That's probably number 11 of the 10. You, you want to be, I had to figure out how to be happy. And so I had to eliminate a lot of done for you services and I had to really Pick, I had to choose services, offers and services that were on brand. So everything that I do is a part of my brand now. I have one. I have private clients, but for you to work with me privately. See, this is another thing with scaling your offers to work with me in a group setting is a lot cheaper than to work with me one on one. And here's and here's the th and here's what I was doing. Working with me one on one was cheaper than my groups what people could work with me for one-on-one -on -one for less that didn't make no goddamn sense and then i was trying to figure out why did i have so many one-on-one -on -one clients why did i have so many done for you things going on so when i raised my one-on-one -on -one prices Okay, thank you. When I raised my one-on-one -on -one prices and I created a, a scalable group product service offer, people started to see, oh, okay, this one-on-one -on -one is not what I thought. Oh, okay, it's a little, a little pricier than I thought. But not only, not only that, y'all, I had to, I had to basically put the pieces together for the one-on-one -on -one. what does that look like and and why that price is what it is and then i had to put the pieces together for the group product what does that look like and why it is what it is 
I had to figure out what are levels of access to me too. Creating my free group. Now we have text messaging. What? We're about to ramp up our text messaging. Getting like I had to really create a scalable offer. And a lot of you guys don't have a scalable offer. A lot of you guys just have a bunch of ideas that's not going anywhere. Exactly. Treat yourself. A lot of y'all have a lot of ideas that's just not going nowhere. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. Y'all know I love y'all. But real talk. You need to take that one idea and turn it into a scalable offer. Turn it into a scalable offer. Okay? And I'm going I'm to be real with y'all because y'all know I don't lie. I ain't got time to lie to y'all. I had to create access to me that was for certain groups of people. There's My coach teaches us there's three different types of people. You have... Your freeple, people who want stuff for free. Your cheaples, people who want it for the, for the low low. And you have premium people. I had to create three products for my one person at the different places that they're at. And when I did that, when I realized, when I realized that I could do that, because for one, I thought I couldn't do it. I thought, nah, I got to have everything pricey. But when I did create something that allowed access for everybody, that's when I really took my business to the next level. Really took my business to the next level. And you guys just don't even know there's so much more. There's so much more that we're adding into the business. All right. Number eight. Funnel. Fun. No, there are funds in the funnel. Funnel funds. Funnel equals funds. Funnel, funnel, funnel equals funds. Funnel, funnel, funnel. Y'all, I can't even listen. You need a funnel. You need a funnel. Okay. When people, the first step to your, your funnel is using social media is the person following you. Once they follow you, they're in your ecosystem. Now they're going to always see your content. They're going to always see when you go live. They, they're going to always know everything that you got going on. They're in your funnel. Now you need to figure out how can they go from follower to actually spending money with me. Funnel. You need a funnel. One of the things I provided in my intensive to my VIP people was a full email funnel. Literally, you could take all these emails and you can use all of them or you can use some of them. You can edit them the way you want. It's a full email funnel. We talked about how you would put together like your your landing pages. What happens the, the journey from when somebody puts in their their like really that's like the nurturing sequence that's really what it is you need a funnel from the moment somebody follows you to the moment somebody buys from you even after they buy from you what the funnel looks like i had to create a funnel i had to and not just not just a funnel but i had to create specific pieces to the funnel upsells downsells one time offers i had to create pieces to the funnel and the crazy part y'all I could teach a funnel like the back of my I I know it front and back of my hand. I could teach it to other people, but I was so strapped for time. I just threw stuff together. I was missing out on money. But the moment that I created a funnel, an actual funnel that works, and I'm going to be real with anybody who's on my email funnel. If my email funnel says reply back and talk to me, if you ever send me an email if you ever send me an email from the funnel, I, I respond back. Point blank, period. We respond back. We, we're not just asking you to send us an email on that funnel just for fun. No. We respond back. So that's a part of it, too. Making sure you nurture the nurturing. Okay? Funnel. I had to put a funnel together. All right, I don't, I didn't have this one. I didn't have this one in here, but I'm going to add it in here. 9 is being able to track, analyze and measure your results. You have to be able to know what's going on in your business. You got to know what's, if you're using a platform, social media, you got to know your your email stats. If anybody's on my email list, this month was all about learning uh, about email. So if you're on my email list, you've basically been learning about email all month. I've been teaching y'all about 
how to read the metrics, what's good, what's bad. I've given you different resources. I created a Pinterest board for the people on my email list where you can go to this Pinterest board and you'll get um you'll see all the different things I added to Pinterest on how to help you with email marketing, different email sequences you should have. Man, I'm talking about this month. August was lit. The last email I've been sending them out every Friday. But um emails you got to be able to measure you got to know what your social media like kpis key performance indicators like you really have to track measure and and adjust if something isn't working you really need to adjust part of what i i wasn't tracking things consistently enough i wasn't keeping up with things consistently enough i didn't know what was good results what were bad results so for me everything was good results and i didn't realize it was bad results like I have a but I'm gonna be another thing y'all a lot of us don't keep up with our followers on um on Instagram and I'm gonna just keep I'm gonna have a transparent moment with you guys um I I got a lot of followers on Instagram that um that are people I don't even know a lot of people like from foreign countries that I don't even know and I think it's um because I had something really like hit on Pinterest and on um I had something really hit on Pinterest and I had people follow me from LinkedIn. And so I think they just started to follow me, but nobody's spending money with me. And so they're messing up my engagement. They're messing up my algorithm, all that stuff. Hey, what's up? Uh, what's up, Derek? They're messing up all that stuff for me. Right. And so what I decided to do, even over the last few weeks, is me and the team, we've just been removing people as our, as following me. We're just removing people from following I'm cleaning house. I don't want anybody following me that's not going to engage with my content, engage with my followers, like engage and buy and buy from me. What's the point? So I'm telling you, you gotta track, you gotta analyze, you gotta measure. All right, let's reset the room just for a second. For anybody that's just now joining, um, tonight I'm talking about the 10 reasons why you haven't hit four or five figures yet in your business when you're using content and social media marketing. Um, I put this list together tonight. One thing I'll also say, y'all, is is sacrifice. Look at my nails. Y'all see my nails? If anybody knows me, you know I always have my nails done. I said I'm not, I am not getting my nails done in August if I don't hit 10K. Point blank, period. I'm about to hit 10K. Point blank, period. So I'm gonna get my nails done. I'm gonna just let y'all know that. But tonight I am sharing it because I had an amazing opportunity that I was um, accepted into. And I really just wanted to um, share with you guys what I had to do in order to start really consistently hitting four figures and then five figure months in my business. And so, one, I had to pick a platform. Two, I had to get clear on my brand. Uh, three, I had to get, I had to really narrow down my target audience and niche girl. Thank you <laughs> Four, I had to really build a consistent, um, content and social media strategy. Five, I had to get consistent. Six, I had to build my confidence. Seven, I had to put together a scalable offer. Eight, I had to put together a funnel. I had to really make sure I had a funnel that works. And even with the funnel, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all audit your funnel audit your funnel okay nine i had to track analyze measure and adjust i had to make sure i knew what my key performance indicators were what was working what was not working and part of that is really honing in on that organic marketing not even using ads not even using any of that stuff i just had to really hone in on the organic piece and figure out what was working and what wasn't working and then 10 I'm about to rub some of y'all the wrong way, but I want y'all to know that I love y'all, okay? Um, but 10 is probably the most important thing I had to overcome. I really had to let go of the mindset that money was, money, I didn't have money. I was, money was tight. I had to let go of the mindset that, you know, I need money for this or need money for that. So I can't do this. I can't do that. I had to really adapt the mindset that money is a tool. Money is a tool. It is endless. It is endless. They make new money every single day. Why am I going to allow money to hold me back? 
from not having the things that I deserve in my life. Even if that meant I had to do a hundred free things in order to learn how to make money so I can spend more money so I can make more money. I want y'all to hear where I'm going with this. So I can spend money on things that taught me how to make more money, which in turn meant I spent more money on learning how to make more money. You see, all nine of those things, the, 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 the previous nine things that I talked about, I didn't just learn that on my own. Somebody taught me those things. Somebody made me aware of that. 30K in one coaching program, 15K in a mentorship to start my digital marketing agency, another uh, 5K to learn um, different ad strategies. Um, shoot, I think what 3K on, I don't even know if I'm still doing that at this point, but 3K on another thing I'm doing, right? Countless hours and times of reading books, articles, and all this other stuff. I really had to adopt the mindset that money is a tool. It's endless. It's abundant. I am a money. I am a money magnet. I had to adopt that mindset. But part of that also meant, y'all, like, I'm going to be real with you. Part of it also meant that I had to get with a coach who can help me understand money. I needed a coach who can help me understand money. There's a coach right now on here that can help y'all understand money. Coach Cece's on here. But I had to get with a coach who could help me understand money. What money was coming into my household, what money was going out of my household, how much money I was making in the business, how much money I was putting out for the business. How many times people came to me to ask for money and how many times I actually gave them money? Let me say that one again. How many times people asked me for money and how many times I actually gave them money? Awesome. Yes, money magnet. Yes. I'm going to say it one more time. How many times people ask me for money and how many times I gave them money? Because part of my money mindset, part of the, the, the mindset block that I had. Oh, I love that. I had to get stingy. I was doing so much for everybody else that I didn't have money to invest in me. See, that was the real issue. I was spending money on everything else that wasn't helping me. See, the strategy was to, to, to shell out for everybody else. But not enough for me. It is a lot. And, and y'all, I had to, like I said, I had to figure out what was coming in, what was going out. I had to look at my credit. I started looking at my business credit. I really had to change my relationship with money. I had a very unhealthy relationship with money. I did. And it was it was a lot of it was how other people influenced my relationship with money. I had to be around people. I had to be around people. Oh my gosh, the first time I was around somebody and they was like, "How much that cost? 10,000?" All right, cool, cool, cool. I got 5 in cash and then I'll use the other 5 for my card. I was like, "What?" You ain't got no more questions. You're not gonna. You're not gonna ask them anything else. You're just okay with just running them ten bands like that. You okay with that? Can I ask questions for you? And you know what that person told me? They said, "Why would I ask questions when I know that me investing this ten k, it makes sense." The whole idea of this makes sense. Like, I see it. It's there in front of me. So what else am I questioning? And to this day, the person that I know that invested that 10K, they damn sure made their money back. 
like for sure made their money back. See, my relationship with money was uh, so flawed that I would see other people investing and I would think, y'all got to be crazy. Y'all got to be out your mind. Why are you spending that much money? What are you doing? You just going to trust them like that? You just going to do this? You going to do that? I didn't realize that I was spending like $700 on subscriptions every month. I didn't realize, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize that I was, I had a, a, a monthly subscription of somebody borrowing money from me. Listen, y'all, that's a whole nother thing. Somebody had a monthly subscription with me to borrow money. That was easily, once I started trimming the fat on Disney Plus, on Hulu, all those other things. I was like, oh, okay, so this is where, this is where it's bleeding. And now here's the, I'm going to say this. I ain't getting rid of my crab legs. I love me some crab legs. Just saying, I need my crab legs. But y'all, when I tell you my relationship with money was just so flawed, whether it was me or it was other people and how they were interacting with me when it came to money, it was just messed up. But once I started to, I'm going to be real with y'all, I started to cut people off. I've lost, I've lost people who I've been real close to for years um, because of money, because I couldn't be their source anymore. I've paid off all my credit card debt. Y'all don't even, first of all, I'm not going to tell y'all how much credit card debt I had. I couldn't even, I couldn't even like text regular people. And, and I say regular people because they don't understand. Like I text somebody and was like, I paid off all my credit cards. And it was like, oh girl, now you got money to spend. I'm like, no, I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to get these five doors on this property. See, I want a commercial unit. Y'all know I'm in short-term rental properties. I do, you know, Airbnbs, but now I'm trying to buy a property that has five plus doors. So I paid off all of my debt. Been working on building my business credit on all my businesses. Right, no ma'am. What are you talking about? So when I tell you guys, it did start with my foundation first. I had to start there. Then I had to start to trim the fat. And then I had to I had to be around people who did not see money as an issue. You should be you should be only be your daughter so as everyone else if I'm broke. Listen, let me tell y'all. I did not realize I was other people's source because I had I had money coming in and I I wasn't directing it just like you guys know, because Cheris said it, right? She said money is energy. Well, that money, I had a lot of energy coming into my ecos, like a lot of energy coming into my life. And I wasn't putting that energy in the right places. I was allowing that energy to flow in all kind of directions instead of flowing in the direction that it should have been going in to help me grow. So I had to change direction. Oh, y'all bet my no muscle so strong. My no muscle is so strong. Y'all, it's unbelievable how strong my no muscle is. But I really had to change my relation, my relationship with money. I had to stop saying I don't have money and start to say, oh, I'm going to create another stream of income for that. Yeah. Oh, I'll do that. Or I'll do this. Or give me a week and I'll have it. Literally, I had to change my relationship with money. And a lot of you guys have to do the same thing. If you really want to take your business to four to five figures, a lot of you guys have to do the exact same thing. Hey, and if you don't, if you don't change your relationship with money and how you view money, it will continue to hold you back because it held me back. It held me back. I'm consistently... Listen, I'm consistently hitting four figures every month. Consistently. I've hit five figures a few times. And I told y'all last month, my goal was to keep hitting five figures every month. Because my goal is to hit six figures every month. 
I have I have businesses that consistently hit five figures every month. But this one, the one I'm passionate about, I'm like, look here. Okay, I need you to do I need you to do to do to do. So I have trimmed a lot of fat in my business. I have trimmed a lot of fat in my personal life. Thank you. And it just really meant, it just really meant getting clear on those 10 things. And this, and these 10 things did not come about over the last five, six months. These 10 things really came about over the last two, three, two and a half, maybe three years. And it just finally hit me like, dang. It just hit me like, boom. So I want to encourage you guys, if you're just now joining, if you're just now joining or um, if you are been here with me, I want to encourage you guys to really look at these 10 things, these 10 things that I talked about tonight and ask yourself, where where do I need to fix things or where do I need to start to look at things different? That is because messaging and every messaging and everything is intact. Right. I, and start to really think about, OK, is my offer scalable? Is um, am I confident in, in, in asking for my price? Am I confident? Right. Am I consistent? Do I have a strategy? Is my is it clear what my brand is? Have I truly picked the platform? Do I have my funnels? Am I analyzing all the things? Really put those things together. As you guys know, I um I spoke about this on Sunday and I'm going to be speaking about it every day until September 6th. I am um we're opening back up the doors to my boot camp, the Rock Your Content Academy 30-day boot camp. It is kicking off on September 6th. I am super excited um to be going to be kicking it off. Uh what's an amazing cause I want from you. I appreciate you too, Priscilla. I am kicking it off and um y'all just don't know there's just been so much growth and change in my life in my personal life and in business life and so this boot camp is going to be amazing but what i will tell you guys it is only 997 the boot camp is 997 this will probably be the last time the boot camp is 997 um i believe it was sunday that i also announced that we won't be bringing back the intensive the reason being is because I am about to put all of my energy in my boot camp and then also in my 90 day accelerator. Um, so we w- we won't be bringing it back next month. Those are going to be the two the two options to work with us. Of course, there are our other services. If you guys need real strategies, if it's um, an IG audit, we of course, we have our course, our ninety seven dollar course. You can always have access to that. But I am ready to help so many of of you guys go to the next level in your business and my 30-day program and my 90-day program is going to be the best way to do that it's going to be the best way to do that um i'm just excited i'm just super excited about where we're going if you guys are interested in the boot camp kicking off on september 6th definitely shoot me a dm and let me know but i but if you guys um are joining me just now or you've been on here Really consider what those 10 things mean to you and really start to look at your business, your personal life and say, am I really like focusing on this? Is this a prime uh, a priority for me? Is this something that I've fixed? Have I trimmed the fat? Do I have too many leeches in my life? Um, am I a leech in my life? And really just start to to get clear on your your messaging, your branding, everything. Um, and I'm just super excited for those who are going to be signing up for the boot camp. Those who are in the intensive this week. Oh my gosh. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. Um, it's just been crazy. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> That's all I can say about it. So you guys, I, I just, before I wrap up tonight, I just want to say, I'm so proud of y'all. I'm just so proud of y'all. I am super proud of y'all for always pushing um also thank y'all for celebrating with me tonight my the opportunity that i'm taking advantage of like y'all just don't know how crazy it is my first class i'm gonna tell y'all when my first class is my first class that i'm gonna be teaching is on september where's the calendar thank you september 13th is my first 
class that I'm going to be teaching. So I can, I'm just like going crazy, going crazy. Um, but thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. But I am, I'm proud of y'all for showing up each and every day um, and doing the dang on thing. We're going to, this challenge for September, if you're in the Rock Your Content community, I'm putting a challenge together for September, another growth challenge. And I would love if all members of the community participate in the growth challenge. So I'll be announcing that later this week too. But y'all, thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for rocking with me and being a part of this amazing community. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm about to go ahead and get off. Look, call me, call me Professor. Professor. Okay, call me Professor. Hey, girl. I'm about to start wearing that name. And, and you guys actually, because I love y'all so much. Hey, nephew. Um, you guys are the first people that I announced it to. Y'all heard it first from here. I like. There's only t two other people that know about it. So, um, just super excited. This is super exciting. All right, y'all. Okay, so I'll see y'all tomorrow. Oh, I like that one, Professor. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.